Hello everybody, welcome to this presentation. My name is Dr. Monica Msunoma Sanza, an epidemiologist. I specialize in working and protecting people from epidemics, diseases which come quickly and affect many people. You have heard of my work here in Uganda, fighting Ebola and many other epidemics, and also in other parts of the world, uh, in West Africa and uh, many areas where we have had epidemics come. Currently, I'm working as senior presidential advisor on epidemics here in Uganda, and I'm also the Minister of Health for the National Fellowship of Born Again Pentecostal Churches. Our concern now is this epidemic which has come it started from China and it has spread all over the world and it's affecting many, many big nations. It is therefore very, very important that we all know what this disease is. We know what it does to people. We get to know how it spreads so that we know how to protect ourselves. It's important that we understand some basic things about coronavirus. Then we will be able to know why the health officials are telling us to do certain particular practices. Coronavirus is a new virus. There have been other viruses called coronavirus, but this particular one, which causes the disease, which they are calling COVID-19, is new. It emerged from China at the end of last year, and it has quickly spread. Why is it spreading fast? This virus is new. Now, when a virus is new, it means many things. The first thing is that there are no people in the world who were immune to this virus. People are not immune. Nobody has ever seen it. Now, let me explain that a little bit. We have many viruses called coronaviruses. And even here in Uganda and all over the world, there are types of coronaviruses. We have coronaviruses which affect different types of animals. They live together with those animals. And because they have been living together, they agree to live together, the virus and the host. So we have coronaviruses that live together with bats, coronaviruses that live with rats, coronaviruses that live with people. Some of these coronaviruses uh, cause some mild disease, many mild diseases in human beings. But when any virus which lives in another host goes into a different host, that host, the new host, does not know it. And two things happen. Either the virus dies, and that is the end of it, or the virus acquires a unique way to live with a new host. But because the new host does not know, the human being does not know this particular virus, they start to fight. And in that fight, the disease which makes us sick and can even kill us results because it damages the body. So this particular new virus, uh, the information which is there now, we know it has always been together with bats, but it appears it went through some other animal and it reached the human being and it is able to multiply in the human being and it is causing severe disease. So this particular virus, unlike all the other coronaviruses that human beings had, has two unique characteristics. The first one is that it can affect the respiratory system. The respiratory system is your breathing system. From the nose, inside there, there are parts we call the sinuses, and then it goes to the throat, and then it goes to the lungs. It affects those cells and it causes you to, f to fail to breathe. So at the beginning, it just affects the upper part. Now when it is affecting your throat, it will cause you to have a dry cough. Even before you have a cough, it is going to start multiplying and starts coming out. It starts coming out through your nose, uh, through your mouth as you speak, and you are able to give that virus to many people before even you know that you are sick. And then when it begins to make you sick, you get a dry cough. Every time you cough, the virus spreads. Now, that has made it easy for this virus to spread to so many places easily because it easily moves from one person to the other. 
and it also gets to the hands. So because of this ability of this virus to affect this breathing system, it can spread a lot very, very quickly. Now, we, like all other coronaviruses, the virus cannot survive in heat once it is outside the body. If it is outside the body and it is hot, above 50 degrees, we are not saying just when we feel hot here, then the virus becomes, it can die. But at normal room temperature, this particular virus can live on your hands for some time. It can live on things where it has been dropped, like tables, like chairs. Uh, it can go on your bags. It can go on your clothes where you touch. And other people will touch there and pick it. Or even you yourself, when you touch your face, the virus can spread. Coronavirus enters the body through the five holes. The evidence so far we have, as I said, it's a new virus, so as we keep getting new information, we'll add. But so far, the information we have is that it enters through the five holes, the two eyes, the two noses, and the mouth. And it goes to those soft tissues, and then it begins to multiply. And then from there, it will go to the rest of the body. Again, I want to emphasize this ability of this virus to multiply in these soft surfaces and cause a cough and cause sneezing results in rapid spread of this virus from one person to another. And the second thing is that the virus multiplies and starts coming out even before people become sick. So you cannot look at a person and be sure that they do not have corona virus. So this virus spreads really, really fast. The coronaviruses are many viruses, and they have been here with us. Each coronavirus usually has its specific host. It has its animal that it lives with, that it infects. And usually, they don't cause very severe disease in these particular hosts. We have some in the human being. There are some which cause common cold, like the flu that we usually have, cough, that one which you have and recover. And also we have some that may cause um, some diarrhea, cause the disease they call severe acute respiratory syndrome. A lot of words, but generally they call it SARS. But that disease did not reach Uganda. It went, it didn't really reach Africa, but it caused the uh, disease in many other areas. And after so many years, a new, a new virus started appearing, which looks like the other one, but this had improved itself. It had improved itself in that one, whereas the other one usually affected the lower, lung, the lower part of the respiratory system. This one can now multiply in the throat of human beings. It has come from its host, it has come into human beings, and can affect the sinuses inside the nose there, it can affect uh, the throat, and so it can start spreading to other people. Diseases which cause epidemics usually must have this ability to spread very fast. So this particular virus can spread very fast. Uh, the second aspect of um, this virus is that like all other coronaviruses or other viruses, they have things that support them to stay alive. Because for it to come from one person to another, it has to stay alive from when it leaves me, it goes to the next person. So this virus has qualities that help it to survive. One, because it spreads from the nose, it's easy to move it from one person to the other. From the, the virus, because it grows in the sinuses, it can start coming out of your saliva and also with the mucus, even with the normal breath. And it can go on your hands. And if somebody is very close, then that person it can reach its, the person's mouth 
the nose and the eyes and they will get infected. Also, if you have got it on your hands and you touch them, you greet them, or you touch something, then the virus can stay there. This virus has ability also to infect the throat and after some time it will induce a cough. Now when you are coughing, then you are bringing out a lot of droplets, a lot of saliva. They are small, sometimes you don't see them. But also when you are speaking, you have some saliva coming out and that is carrying the virus and it has a tendency to drop. So when this virus is able to affect those things and then the fact that it can get out before even somebody knows that you are sick, this tends to cause the disease to spread very, very fast. So the fact that the virus is new shows that, means that nobody has immunity to this virus. It does not matter whether you are vaccinated against all the other diseases. This particular one, until we have a vaccine, at the moment, the only way you get immunity is if you get infected. The ability to survive in the environment, because the virus can stay on your hands for some time, up to 10 minutes if your hands are dry, but if your hands are soiled, they have something in, it can stay for a longer time. It has ability to land on surfaces, um, wooden surfaces, clothes, and it stays. So anybody that touches there can pick the virus. Or if there is a wind or something and you put your face very close, the virus can be blown and it can survive. Or if you're very close, you're standing very close to somebody who is spitting out saliva or it can move. And the more information is coming out of this virus, it has been shown that it can stay on bugs, it can stay on plastic very long, on plastic up to nine days it has been demonstrated. This virus can stay. The good news is that um, the virus can be killed when you expose it to soap, like when we are washing our hands. For, but it has to be for at least 20 seconds. If you just put soap quickly for a few minutes, then it will not kill the virus. But also there are disinfectants which we are using, they can kill this virus. And this is the basis of many of the control measures that we are promoting. Concerning coronavirus, there has been a lot of concern from the time it started in China. And there has been a lot of coverage on media and some people have come out to say, we have diseases here which are killing more people than this coronavirus. After all, we are saying that only 20% of the people develop a severe disease. We are saying that, you know, many people recover. Now, there are many, many big, big concerns. This is not only for Uganda, but globally. This virus has these qualities. One, the virus can spread very quickly to so many people. So when it reaches a population, almost 100% of people come in contact with the person or with the virus who get infected. So although not everybody will develop a very severe disease, it will make very, very many people sick. Very many people sick. The virus has ability to cause a very acute severe pneumonia. Now, the people who get the pneumonia, for them to survive, they need sophisticated equipment. In Uganda, we have some intensive care units, but definitely, if we have a huge number of people requiring these services, it will not be enough. Moreover, the people who go into intensive care, they take a long time. Some people have been taking in countries like Italy, they take up to six weeks. So when we have some units, they are already occupied, those patients are not getting out quickly. And if some people have seen in Italy, this uh, last week, Wednesday, from Wednesday, 18th March 2020, uh, over the past few days, you see coffins lined. 600 people have died in a day. 
And these are not just obscure people. These are very, very important people. Nobody in the world, apart from those who have recovered in China and in the countries that have been affected, is immune to this disease. So anybody who comes in touch with the virus is going to get sick. So like in Uganda, we could get up to a million people requiring critical care if we do not prevent, and the majority of us don't get the disease. So the ability of the virus to move very quickly and infect people, the ability of the virus to cause a very severe disease, and the fact that nobody has immunity to this disease is the big concern. That is why all over the world, whereas we have had diseases like HIV, we have had malaria, no disease has caused a global shutdown like this one. And if you look, the death rates are rising everywhere. So here in Uganda, as in Africa, we have to be extremely careful and listen. The good news is that the measures to prevent, whereas government and Minister of Health has their role to play, you have a lot to play. You have a big role to play in protecting yourself, in protecting your family, and in protecting the other people that you're going to meet. So the big question is, what do I do? What should I do? What can I do? We are all scared, and it's true. There are many people scared all over the world, you know? There are many people scared all over the world. Uh, Yesterday, 22nd March 2020, we heard that uh, the German Chancellor Marcos has self-isolated herself because she went to see a doctor and then the doctor tested positive shortly after. There are ministers of health that have got infected, the heads of state are at risk. So we feel frightened, we feel scared, but there are simple things that we can do and they are within our reach. And I. When you understand the basic things we have explained about the virus, the virus spreads very quickly from person to person. Therefore, we must, we must at all costs avoid gatherings. We must avoid crowds. Because you don't know who in that crowd has them. They may not even have symptoms, but they are infecting other people. They are saying that when you meet Two other people whom you don't normally stay with, that's a crowd. Mass gatherings, we are many people. Because you can imagine, let's say we meet 20 people to pray, because we are very spiritual people, we are praying for our people. Then out of the 20, one of you has the virus. Now those 20 people will all get exposed to the virus. Protecting, how do I protect myself? Number one, avoid crowds. Because this virus has ability to spread very fast from person to person. Moreover, it can spread even when you don't know whether that person has the virus or not. You remember during Ebola, we told you people don't spread the virus until they show symptoms. That's different from corona. Corona, two to three days, even before people develop, signs, develop fever, start coughing, they can spread the disease. So you imagine 20 of you gathering to pray. And out of the 20, you don't know where the others have been. So one of you has the virus. They are going to infect all the 20. Now many of these 20 may not develop signs and symptoms, but they will still develop, de spread the virus for up to three weeks. They are spreading this virus. So you can imagine there are different 20 families. They are all going to get sick. And then those family members, maybe they are also going to meet other people. So the virus can move through your community, through your church, through your village very, very fast, affecting so many people at a go. So if you get 100 people, 20 are going to be very, very sick. And then those will also infect others. So avoid crowds. Now what's a crowd? A crowd is two more, if you are three, we say three is a crowd. 
So if you are at any one time you are meeting two people whom you don't normally stay with, you don't normally live with, that is a crowd. So if you are in the office, because people are still working, if you are in the office, keep your distance. Don't be gathering in one small place, three of you, because you don't know where the others have been. The virus is able to have multiplier. Try to avoid unnecessary movement, because unnecessary travel, you are in taxi, you are in bus. If you can postpone that thing, life is more important than the agents of that thing. If you can postpone to go and visit that person, it, you, it will put you in a crowd. You know you are seated in a taxi, you are in a crowd because you are meeting three people, two other people whom you don't normally live with. You have gone to a bar, you are going to all these places where you are meeting people you don't normally live with. So the first major protection is crowd, avoid crowds. Visitors, let's suspend visiting. We have telephones. Instead of visiting, we call. Let's be careful about admitting visitors into our homes and let's also avoid visiting other people. It's not going to be forever. It's just through this time. Another protective measure is hand washing. Now, this virus enters the body through, mainly through these five holes on our face. It enters through your eyes, it enters through your nostrils, and it enters through your mouth. Now, usually when you are standing close to people, then the other person is speaking, and then saliva is moving, the person sneezes, that one we can prevent by avoiding crowds. What about the virus that you're going to pick up from anywhere you go? You're going to put your phone somewhere, somebody might have left the virus there, you may sit on a chair, somebody has been there, the virus is there, you may touch door handles, you will, you know, you are going to touch money, you're going to touch your bag which was seated somewhere, your laptop, or books or anything that you have put somewhere, the virus could get on that, those things. The virus could be there, uh, but it is until it moves from there to your face and touches your eyes and touches your nostrils and touches your mouth, that's when the virus will be transferred to you to cause disease. Now the medium, the agent that moves that virus are your hands. So we are requesting you to do two things with your hands. One, hand management. We are requesting you in the book of Job. We read Job said he had made a covenant with his eyes not to look at a woman twice. So this is biblical. Make a covenant with your hands never to touch your face. These are parts of our bodies. They are members of our bodies and we are in charge of them. Job did not simply say, okay, it is only your eyes, but at that time it was putting his life in danger. So any member of your body, in fact, Jesus used and said it is better to cut it off. If your hands are continuously moving to your face, then you are putting yourself in danger. Okay, I'm getting distracted because my cameraman is touching his face. Brian, <laughs> not touching your face. So the issue is that I'm emphasizing this because it is so natural. We have been raised, even from the, we don't even remember when we started touching our faces. It's been part of us. So you are going to make a deliberate effort to watch over one another and also to watch yourself, you know. Don't touch your face. The virus could be on your hands, it could go on other things, but as long as it does not move to your face, as long as the, the hands do not touch, so that the virus has access to your eyes, to your nostrils, and to your mouth, you will not get the virus. So the first thing I want to emphasize is hand management. Learn how to manage your hands. Make a covenant with your hands. It start now. Start now. Remind, think consciously about it. In fact, for me now, I don't touch my face. I don't know when, except when I'm bathing, where I wash my hands thoroughly with soap. 
if something itches me suddenly, I don't use a hanky. I, I use tissue, I don't use a hanky, but if something is itching, creeping on my face, I will pick my collar, and many of you have something, I will pick the nearest part for us ladies, you may be having a dress, I pick and get the inside with my thumb. I get that and then I will clear something. I do not allow my hands to directly touch the inside, you see, uh, let me do it again. I will pick, this is a double so that I'm holding down. Then I'll use one finger to roll the other one. Then I'll push with my thumb and clean or scratch. Start practicing this now so that you become better and better and better at it. The only time it is safe to touch your face is after you've thoroughly washed your hands the way we're going to show you in another video. So, your hands have parts. You have to make sure that all parts are washed. So I've put soap in my hands, and my first responsibility is to wash. You know you have grooves in your hands, and mucus can stay there. So the first is, it's not this just rubbing hands. This hand is washing this what? Hand. And this hand is washing this hand. So be deliberate. I am washing this hand, you know. So wash. Now we are cleaning the palms. Okay? We are cleaning the palms. But then there are these parts here, which we have to make sure that they are clean. You clean in here, and you clean in here. No, have you followed me? Yes. It usually takes a very short time. Mm -hmm. huh? So pour some little water for me again. Now, if you still have the soap, you just need to turn and wash the back of your hand. It's not a matter. You wash the back and you wash in between. If you have a ring, wash with your ring on. Don't remove it first because then the ring is going to retain that. That. So you are cleaning in here, and then you clean here, because this part is the one which handles most things. So make effort to make sure you are cleaning there. I'm also going to go to this one. I'm going to, to wash it, because sometimes you rub your face with the back. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wash. I'm washing it, not just rubbing hands together. Mm -hmm. And I'm washing again in between, you know, my... And then, the last part to wash are the fingertips. You are washing the fingertips, not wetting them. You know things can hide in here. So when you wash, it is not a matter of I saw people just rubbing here. No, you are trying to get that place between the ball of the finger and the nail clean. So you are going to use this hand to wash all of them. You are moving each of them on the palm and getting the detergent getting there and you're going to do the same for this one not just rubbing there you when you see the doctors doing it for you you think they just rub there no they are washing from one to the other to the other getting the things getting there now i'm ready to rinse okay. please keep your hands off your face don't pick your nose don't touch your ears, because from there, it will move to something else. Don't touch your nose. Please don't pick things off your mouth. If anything is distracting you, use the inside part of your cloth. Why the inside? Because that's already touching your body. It's not exposed to the outside. So don't just pick something from outside, but use, pick a piece, either of your collar, your coat, and using your thumb, bring out one which is inside. I know many of you say, oh, but that's not very social. Social comes after life. If I'm dead and I'm in the coffin, no matter how much social they do, I am dead. So social is defined by us. Pick that part and then clean any part on your face. Don't let your hands touch your face. Make a covenant with your hands never to touch your face. Don't touch your face. Before you leave home, check what you have put on. 
Will it give you room to pick the cloth? I do not encourage use of handkerchiefs in an epidemic like this. Because when you sneeze, you'll do what? You know you are touching the handkerchief with your hands. It's going to increase with your hands and you're putting them on your handkerchief. On your handkerchief and then you're putting the handkerchief on yourself. So you've picked them from somewhere. So you, the clothes that you're wearing, which you ironed in the morning, is the safest thing for you to use. The second component uh, of managing your hands is hand hygiene. How clean are your hands? Have you ever come home and washed your hands with soap and seen how much that comes out of your hands? And you don't know. Now our hands, our skin, even the palms, I think many of you know you get sweat in your palms. So our skin is designed to keep it oily. So our hands pick that, some of it we don't see. Now that dirt, which is some, some of it is oil, it picks, it keeps things to stick to our hands. We may not see them, but our hands pick a lot of things. And our hands are the mobile, the most mobile part of your body. It's touching everywhere. In fact, if you're going to get infected, apart from breathing in directly, you're going to get infected, not just by corona, but many diseases are going to come through your hands. So hand hygiene. You have moved out, you have not touched your face, you've made a covenant never to touch your face every time you find water. And now we are requesting every building, every office, every workplace, provide the water. And this morning I was gratified when I was coming. Every car park, garage, everywhere, they have put hand washing facilities. Just put soap and water. Once you've washed your hands, thoroughly. The way we teach you, because most of us do not wash our hands, wash the hands thoroughly. Every time now, I'm saying everywhere you are entering, where you're likely to touch something, wash your hands. And let's also take a responsibility to ask the building owners, where is the hand washing facility? Everywhere you're entering, where is the hand washing facility? Wash your hands when you're going in, wash your hands when you're going out. When you reach home, don't let anybody come and give you a hug or greet or what. The first place to reach is the hand washing facility. Wash your hands thoroughly. When you are unable to wash, you can use um, the hand sanitizers. Now, we have a few challenges. Because most people just want to put a, a little hand sanitizer, do this, and think they have sanitized their hands. That's not sanitizing. You sanitize your hands moving through the same process as when you are washing. So you put everywhere, uh, you put the hand sanitizer everywhere, uh, but even if you are going to sanitize, even if you have sanitized, your hands when you reach a place wash your hands wash your hands don't touch anything don't even remove your clothes which you have been out wearing before you wash your hands don't enter your car to drive before you wash your hands wash your hands when you get out of the car wash your hands there is now water everywhere just wash your hands with soap and water